What if I told you that the International Workers' Day, which you celebrate today, was as a result of the initiative of communism and socialism? What if I told you that communism and socialism are bad and evil? What if I told you that the church, in reacting to this, points us to the figure of Saint Joseph as the model and patron of workers on the 1st of May. Stay tuned, don't go away, and let us understand together the essence of celebrating 1st of May as the day of workers having Saint Joseph as its patron and model. And so, my dear friends in Christ, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In order to understand our subject matter today, it is pertinent to briefly understand the evil of communism and socialism. Socialism is just a twin sister of communism. Communism, as the name implies, involves the communal ownership of goods, communal production and distribution of goods. There is no room for private ownership. This was a brainchild of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. In their manifesto, they had it clearly written that their aim was to abolish all private ownership of goods. And what is the evil here? The evil here is that goods are controlled and owned by the state, where the rich become richer and the poor become poorer. The dignity of man is trampled upon. That is what is called forced labor. Man is forced into labor. Man is forced to surrender his goods to the state. This involves also killings of the innocent and all sorts. Here, the idea of work becomes distorted and in celebrating their evil, they had to fix May 1, 1889 as Workers' Day. And the church, understanding this ideology, had to react. First, we have the reaction of Pope Leo XIII in his Rerum Novarum explaining the condition of workers. We also have the reaction of Pope Pius XI in his document Quadragesimo Anno. This simply means 40th year. Now he wrote this document 40 years after the reaction of Pope Leo XIII. Here he criticized communism and socialism. And later, in the year 1955, Pope Pius XII would, after criticizing, reacting to communism and socialism, would bring about the person and the figure of Saint Joseph as a model of workers, as one who understood what it is to walk, to till the earth and make it habitable. Saint Joseph, whom the scriptures describe as the carpenter, would train the strong hands of Christ at the plain and the lake, as we can see in this photo at the background. That is why Christ was tagged as the carpenter in Mark chapter 6, verse 3. Saint Joseph understood the divine mandate and he, he knew that work was indeed a blessing for man. This we have in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And what does this portion say? Yahweh God took the man and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and take care of it. And we understand this, that work is a blessing, a participation in the creative work of God. Work is never a cause. So St. Joseph, in his own way, 
reacted and contributed to the well-being of our world. And that is why the church points us to the person of Saint Joseph. The Catechism of the Catholic Church also does not leave us without a clue. It says in paragraph 378 that the sign of man's familiarity with God is that God places him in the garden. There he lives to till it and keep it. Work is not yet a burden, but rather the collaboration of man and woman with God in perfecting the visible creation. And in look, understanding this better, St. Paul will call us to glorify God in our works. What does he say? In his letter to the Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24, St. Paul says, Whatever your work is, put your heart into it as done for the Lord and not for human beings, knowing that the Lord will repay you by making you his heirs. It is Christ the Lord that you are serving. Dear friends in Christ, unfortunately today we are faced with a gross problem of work. There are questions of unemployment, there are questions of different manipulations toward work. Today in so many countries, the minimum salary is nothing to write home about. And is this what we are celebrating as the day of workers? In so many countries, the rich become richer and the poor become poorer. In so many countries, so many youths are being displaced. They are forced to go into unhealthy and unethical ways of making ends meet. This is their fault actually, but then the system is bad. So on this day, the day of workers, the church points us to Saint Joseph to understand what work is, to understand what our collaboration is and what we must do in order to be worthy collaborators with the Creator at work. And so my dear friends in Christ, the church points us to always remember the dignity of work. Work itself has a dignity and in working we must not trample on the dignity of the human being. In understanding this better, the church continues to speak truth to power. The church continues to raise its voice whenever there is corruption, whenever there is dehumanization, whenever there is unemployment and all sorts that distorts the true nature of work. In this regard, Pope John Paul II is noted to have written in his encyclical Laborem Excessens, the church considers it a duty to speak out on work from the viewpoint of its human value and of the moral order to which it belongs. And she sees this as one of her important tasks within the service that she renders to the evangelical message as a whole. At the same time, she sees it as a particular duty to form a spirituality of work which will help all people to come closer through work to God, the Creator and Redeemer, to participate in His salvific plan for man and the world and to deepen their friendship with Christ in their life by accepting through faith a living participation in His threefold mission, a priest, prophet and king, as the Second Vatican Council so eloquently teaches. And so my dear friends in Christ, if you are celebrating Workers Day today, you must bear in mind that there must be dignity in the work you do. It must be devoid of corruption, dehumanization and all sorts. If you as a master, you are busy exploiting from others, you are busy maltreating those who work under you, you are busy withholding the wages of those who work under you, then you shouldn't be celebrating Workers' Day. Your situation, your case should be likened with the communists and the socialists. Let us distance ourselves from the communists and the socialists and continue to see in the person of Saint Joseph the model of workers. May Saint Joseph continue to inspire us and also intercede for us as we are 
living in a community, in a context that is laden with unemployment, may St. Joseph continue to inspire us and lead us in the footsteps of Christ. So I wish you all a happy Workers Day. Be happy, work justly, and earn justly. And if you are unemployed today, continue to strive and earn a living. Be creative. St. Joseph is regarded as one who is creatively courageous and in the penultimate title which Pope Francis gave to him in his Patris Corde, he is known as the working father. We must be inventive, we must try and invent something and do something in order to earn a living, in order to continue to participate in the creative work of God. I would end this presentation by saying a brief prayer for workers. Here we have the, the prayer of Pope Pius X for success in work seeking the intercession of Saint Joseph. Let us pray. Glorious Saint Joseph, model of all those who are devoted to labor, obtain for us the grace to work conscientiously putting the call of duty above our many sins, to work with thankfulness and joy, considering it an honor to employ and develop by means of labor, the gift received from God, to work with order, peace, prudence, and patience, never surrendering to weariness or difficulties to work, to work above all with purity of intention, and with detachment from self, having always death before our eyes and the account which we must render of time lost, of talent wasted, of good omitted, of vain complacency in success so fatal to the work of God. All for Jesus, all for Mary, all after thy example, O Petrarch, Joseph, such shall be our motto in life and in death. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.